Hello, my name is Andy and I'm the Village Idiot and I'm with a cart and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome to the final parish of North East Derbyshire, number 24 of 24. And this one is going to begin and end at a roundabout opposite a big Sainsbury's, which is ideal for me because I'm going to need some food when I've done this one. It's going to be a long walk around the only town in northeast Derbyshire with a population of over 21,000 people. And this one is one I've been looking forward to for a while because this one has a landmark in it, which is actually not technically speaking anything to do with Dronfield, but it happens to fall within Dronfield. Welcome to the parish and the town of Dronfield. Dronfield is officially the only town in North East Derbyshire. This includes the settlements of Dronfield Woodhouse and Coal Aston. It lies in the valley of the River Drone between Chesterfield and Sheffield. The Peak District National Park is three miles away to the west. The name Dronfield means open land infested with drones. Drones are male bees and derives from the Old English dran and fell. The town existed before the 1086 Doomsday Book and has a 13th century parish church. In 1662, Charles II granted the town a market, although this later ceased. The industrial history of the town includes coal mining, the wool trade, the production of soap and steel, and engineering. Today, a range of manufacturing firms still operate in the town. Between the 16th and 19th centuries, Dronfield grew around various industries, the most widespread of which was coal mining, with pits at Stubley being mentioned in the 16th century, and a map of Hilltop in the 17th showing some workings. Further mines were opened at Coal Aston in 1785 and Car Lane in Dronfield Woodhouse in 1795. The town also benefited from trade with the lead mining and grindstone industries in the Peak District. The wealth of the Rotherham family who became lords of the manor of Dronfield was based on the lead trade. The Wilson Camel Steelworks was built in the town in 1872 following the completion of the Midland Main Line through the town in April 1869. Bessemer Steel was first blown at the site in March 1873 and the plant was soon capable of producing 700 tonnes, mostly as rails every week. Dronfield therefore became a boom town but its prosperity was short lived. Its site had limitations that could not compete with low cost coastal locations and in 1883 production of steel moved from Dronfield to Workington in Cumbria. Steel workers and their families moved too. It's estimated 1500 townspeople made the trip to Workington. Dronies they were called by the people of Workington and the newcomers formed Workington AFC in 1888. Little is known about Dronfield's early history. It suffered after the Norman Conquest when William the Conqueror sought to bring the north of England under control. Dronfield's population also increased dramatically in the post-war years, from 6,500 in 1945 to its current size of just over 21,000. It covers an area of 13.99 square kilometres and has, as neighbours, the parishes of Unston, Holmesfield, Barlow and Eckington. In the 2011 census, Dronfield had 9,388 dwellings, 9,267 households and a population of 21,261, of whom 10,333 were male and 10,928 were female. So because Dronfield is so big, I've said this numerous times in small towns like these, uh, I can't catch everything. Um, I don't expect to catch everything. So the route I've taken around the town centre is basically down the Lee Valley and then around uh, past uh, Fanshawe School and then I'm currently on Princess Road and this leads down to the train station which will take us to the more town centre part uh, where the main sort of shops and amenities are. So uh, after this it'll be a drive around Dronfield Woodhouse which is an area to the west of the main Dronfield settlement 
uh, and then we'll go up to Cole Aston. And to finish off, there's something rather special, which I've been building towards for quite a while. Dronfield is served by a monthly magazine, this is called the Dronfield Eye, and formerly by a weekly local newspaper called the Dronfield Advertiser. Notable events are the annual Dronfield Gala and the Dronfield Woodhouse and Cole Aston well dressings, which are held in July. There's also Dronfest, which is a popular music festival, and it takes place in the town in the summer. Since 1972, Dronfield has been twinned with Sindelfingen in Germany. A park in Dronfield Woodhouse was renamed Sindelfingen Park in the early 1990s to celebrate the partnership. Dronfield Henry Fanshawe School has an annual student exchange with a school in Sindelfingen, which helps establish links between the young people in the two towns. Now, here's a railway line which provides the town with a train station, one of many, many amenities. Let's have a look at some of those right now. Dronfield has plenty of bus services, too many to list. The main destinations from here are Chesterfield and Sheffield. There's a plethora of pubs. In a similar way to Brimington, you could easily go for a pub crawl in Dronfield. Not that I'm suggesting you should, but you know, you could. These include the White Swan, the Dronfield Arms, the Green Dragon and the Blue Stoops, and countless others in and around the town, including ones in both Dronfield Woodhouse and Cole Aston. You're certainly never going to be dry in Dronfield. The town also has several social clubs. The Contact Club, Dronfield Woodhouse Sports and Social Club, Hilltop Sports and Social Club and the Pioneer Club. Cliff Park has three tennis courts, a basketball court, a children's play area, a bowling green, a meeting room with a kitchen, and a multi-use games area with changing rooms. Church time now. The Church of St John the Baptist was originally built in 1135 when Oscott was the rector and the parish of Dromfield covered Little Barlow, Cole Aston, Povey, Holmesfield, Appenall, Dor, and Totley. The Guild of the Blessed Virgin Mary was established in 1349 in the Hall of the Chantry Priests. However, due to the dissolution of the monasteries and the subsequent suppression of the guilds and chantries in 1547, it became a local inn, which still operates today as the Green Dragon. So according to Boris, masks are back in fashion. So I've got to put this one on while we go inside the church here in Dromfield. The present church dates from the late 13th to 14th century with mid-16th century alteration. It has ashlar and coarse rubble walls of coal measured sandstone with graduated slate and lead roof coverings and an octagonal spire. Repairs were made in about 1819 with more alterations in 1855 and 1916. There are over 120 brasses and monuments, many of which line the floor in the chancel and nave. This is not the only religious building in the town. There are several others, including this one, Dronfield Baptist Church, which is opposite Sainsbury's. Then on Lee Road, we have the Oaks Community Church. And on Princess Road, there's the Dronfield Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses. Hidden away off the High Street is the Parish Hall, although also off the High Street there's a much bigger and more impressive hall than this. That would be Dronfield Hall Barn and it dates from 1430. This is a wedding venue as well as housing some of the local heritage, arts, natural history and exhibitions. The town has a range of businesses, mainly located on the Cali White Lane Industrial Estate at the eastern end of the town and along Reeks Lane and Stubley Lane, northwest of the town centre.
There are no end of small shopping precincts located all around the town centre, with the main one being off the high street. As mentioned before, in 1662, Dronfield was granted a market by Charles II, but in the 18th century, due to the proximity of Sheffield and Chesterfield, the market went into decline. However, it's still held every Thursday in the rear car park of the Civic Centre on Farwater Lane. During the 16th century, the centre of Dronfield would have looked much different with nowhere near as many shops and amenities as it has now. With its population of sheep farmers, it had a significant number of families working in the wool trade, engaged in spinning and weaving and also the production and selling of cloth. Soper Lane, being next to the river, was the centre of the soap making and tanning industry in the town, with a dye works also situated there. We're making our way now into the station. Construction of the Sheffield and Chesterfield line was authorised by the Midland Railway Act of 1864, but it wasn't until Monday the 2nd of February 1870 that the line and Dronfield station were open to traffic. You know what, I feel bad for laughing, but the guy should not really be walking across the road with headphones on like that. <laughs> it was designed by the Midland Railway Company architect John Holloway Sanders. Railwaymen know the line here as the new road. There was an old road built by the North Midland Railway which took an easier route along the Rother Valley and bypassed Sheffield. The station is on the long climb up the Drone Valley to Bradway Tunnel at the point where the gradient steepens from 1 in 201 to 1 in 102. The station had single storey wooden buildings on both platforms. The main buildings, including booking office and staff offices, were on the up platform nearest Chesterfield Road, and the smaller building on the other platform contained a waiting room and a ladies' waiting room. To the south of the passenger station, on the land now used as a car park, was the goods station with a brick built warehouse and several sidings. The original Midland Railway Station was closed to passengers in 1967. In February 1979, however, British Rail temporarily reopened the station because road transport throughout Sheffield had been brought to a standstill by heavy snowfall. Now, there's a building here which overlooks this roundabout, which you might think is a church because it looks grand enough to be one. But that is actually a school. That's Henry Fanshawe School. In 1993, Dronfield Henry Fanshawe School, which has been formerly known as Dronfield School and previously as well Dronfield Grammar School, suffered major damage when its 1960 system-built blocks were completely gutted by fire, requiring all firefighting resources from all nearby towns and Sheffield to control the blaze. Dronfield Junior and Infant Schools are the biggest primary schools in Dronfield, reaching more than 600 pupils. Not far away from this is Dronfield Police Station on Lee Road. This building is Dronfield Sports Centre and it's not the only sports-based facility in the town. In January 2010, a new £2.5 million sports complex opened at Gosforth Fields on the old Gosforth School site. It was opened by Sir Trevor Brooking and John Owen. Close to the centre of the town, there's the Peel Centre, named for Sir Robert Peel. In a few moments, we'll be talking about something else with that name that stands in front of this. The base of the town council is in this building, almost opposite the Peel Centre. There's also a library. And a medical centre. and also a care home. This is the green care home and it's almost dead opposite Fanshawe School. On the 16th of October 1975, the £6.5 million pound five mile A61 Dronfield Unston Bypass was opened running through the western side of the town to allow easier access for travel between the larger populated areas of Sheffield to the north and Chesterfield to the south. This is the bypass as seen from underneath on Gosforth Drive. So I've driven on that part of the A61 many a time.
time before, never actually realizing how tall that bridge is. It's really quite large. If you stand underneath it, you get an impression of how tall it is. It's uh, a marvelous piece of engineering, forming, of course, part of the Unston Dronfield Bypass. The Leebrook Valley in the heart of Dronfield is a one kilometer green corridor along the main waterway of the Lee Brook. The Lee Brook Valley project, formed of volunteers from churches and other local residents, transformed the site from an underused area filled with rubbish to a lovely green space enjoyed by residents and wildlife alike. The rubbish has since been removed and a woodland path has been built to protect the wildflowers. All the timber work has been repaired and there's been bat boxes and bird boxes installed and the stream's pollution has been greatly reduced. Collaboration with Yorkshire Water has resulted in sustainable flood meadows which help reduce surface water flooding in this vulnerable area. I found this to be a very peaceful area of Dromfield, one which isn't a million miles away from the busy town centre, yet still seems to be. In the grounds of the station there's a coal truck, signifying Dronfield's association with the local mining. Flowing alongside the railway line is the River Drone. This flows south from its source on the Derbyshire South Yorkshire border, through Dronfield, Unston and Unston Green, before merging at Sheep Bridge to the north of Chesterfield with the Barlow Brook. In the late 1990s, the river burst its banks and flooded Dronfield Bottom. As a result, a flood storage reservoir was built at Bowshaw to hold back water and run off from the Batemore and Jordan Thorpe housing estates in the south of Sheffield. The Peel Monument now situated on the town's high street. This was built in 1854 out of grit stone as a tribute to Sir Robert Peel to commemorate his repeal of the Corn Laws in 1846. The monument is very distinctive and is often portrayed in images of the town. Near to the Peel Monument on the high street is a 16th century house known as the Cottage. It's believed that it was once owned by Lord Byron, although there is no proof that he was ever a Dronfield resident. The Peel Monument is just one of Dronfield's 42 structures that are listed by Historic England for their historical or architectural interest. These buildings include such as Aston End, Chiverton House, Dronfield Woodhouse Hall Farmhouse, Dronfield Manor and several buildings in Church Street and the High Street. The town's war memorial stands in front of the library off the high street, lest we forget. Okay, just a few steps further and I'm back where I started, close to Sainsbury's. One thing I have noticed about Dronfield, plenty of free parking. So if you want to come shopping here, you don't have to pay. Okay, right, so we're not quite done with uh, Dronfield just yet, of course, because there are some other areas within this one. The first of which is Dronfield Woodhouse and today I'm going to use the car to drive around that and show you what's there. Let's go for a drive.
Okay, now we come to Cole Aston, which is to the east of Dronfield. And this will be a nice little walk around. It's a nice circular little uh, route around Cole Aston I can take for you. And then we'll move on to the final part of this epic Dronfield video and the final part of North East Derbyshire, in fact. Cole Aston sits on a ridge overlooking Sheffield and Dronfield. The name Cole Aston alludes to the number of walk-in coal mines there once were in the area. Cole Aston is known locally for its many pubs, including the Cross Daggers, the Yew Tree, the Checkers, which is seen here, and the Royal Oak, which is locally known as the Pond. There are many stone-built houses and terraces dating back to the mining area during the 19th century. The last mine, Sicklebrook Colliery on Sicklebrook Lane, off Eckington Road, closed in 1938. The large Victorian village school that was once here has now been converted into a private house. Here's the Cross Daggers on Brown Lane atop a small hill, which forms one of the oldest parts of the village. Here's the village's war memorial in the middle of a triangular junction facing the Cross Daggers. This whole part of Cole Aston is so narrow that modern day traffic has to adhere to a one-way system, up the hill along Brown Lane and down the hill along Cross Lane. To the south of Cole Aston there's Frith Wood, which is made up of mixed woodland rich in many species of fauna and flora and is thought to be an ancient woodland. It's now a conservation area, and although it's spelt Frithwood on OS Max, many locals call it Firthwood, as in the neighbouring Firthwood Road. Famous hunter and anthropologist William Hale used that woodland to perform a series of training exercises before expeditions to New Hanover. Well, it's taken until Cole Aston to find a map of Dronfield but I have found a map of Dronfield. Okay, so I can show you where I've been in fact here. So our main route started just there. That, that there where it says works, that is uh, where Sainsbury's is. And I walked down here uh, across uh, through this uh, uh, path here. That's where the valley is. That's where the sports center is. And then, um, where did I go after that? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Up here, down Lee Road, across past Mansion School, up to Hartington Road and back down Princess, which is Chesterfield Road, then across into the station before coming back up here uh, and along this part here via Sopa Lane so I can catch the, the river. That's really where I've been. That's the main walk I took around Dronfield. So, as you can see, that's not really much when you consider how big Dronfield is if I just pan out. And Dronfield Woodhouse, this is the area that I drove around. So there's all this here, which I, I haven't been to. You can see how large this is and all this as well, which I haven't been to. So I am, I am expecting people to say things along the lines of, you know, I didn't go to this, I didn't go to that in this episode. I, I physically can't because there's just so much in Dronfield. And where we are here now is Cole Aston. And uh, this board is there, I think. I think it's, no, there, we're there. That's where we are. And I'm just basically, I'm just basically walking around this part here. So again, there's, there's, there's more in between here that I haven't touched. But it's just impossible to, to, to film every last little bit of a town this big. Remember, it's 21,000 people. But I think I have caught the main bits up to now. Anyway, this map, is across the road from Cole Aston Village Hall. Let's go and have a look at that. The Village Hall is located next to the Royal Oak and was originally built by the villagers. It's since been rebuilt and modernised, funded in part by the Millennium Lottery. Annually, a well dressing is held on the site of the former village pond opposite the Royal Oak, hence the local nickname of the pond. Cole Aston also has a Methodist church on Eckington Road. There's also a chapel and several local shops on Barnard Avenue. Here 
Here's a local book exchange too, in the red phone box just a few paces further away back towards the centre of the village. And here's an advert for a craft fair. The annual village gala, held every July based at the village hall, is a Cole Aston highlight. Behind the village hall are playing fields, a hard tennis court and a bowling green which is home to the local bowling club. Popular with the local community are the regular Cole Aston live music events which have featured a good many professional artists from the folk music scene and wider afield. Cole Astoners are spoilt with the amount of footpaths and walking routes they have excellent access to including the Dronfield 2000 Rotary Walk. Deitch Lane, the main route from the village to Sheffield, has a petrol station which is also a store. Next door is the Ferndale Garden Centre and there's another one of these called New Leaf Nurseries at the bottom of the hill on the boundary of Sheffield. The local post office, a butcher, two news agents and the old co-op have all closed down within the last two decades. That being said, Coal Aston is still a vibrant part of Dronfield, with many a community event happening and I personally think this would be my location of choice to live if I wanted to pitch up within the town. The average house here, by the way, will cost you £287,000. So, I'm just going to take a perch here on the seat of friendship to the friends of the Dronfield 2000 Rotary Walk Society and this is in a nice little green area right in the centre of Cole Aston with the checkers over there in the distance. I'm going to take a, a pew here for a few minutes before we finish off the Dronfield episode. But while I do that I'm going to give you guys the picture bit today. Here it comes. Okay, so for my grand finale, for not just Dronfield, but also for the entire district of North East Derbyshire, I've come to the home of football. Behind me is the Tufnell's home of football stadium, and this is where Sheffield FC play their home games. Why is this important? Because Sheffield FC were the first ever football club, the world's oldest. Now, as you can see, uh, there's nobody here at the moment. <laughs> I did send the club an email <clears throat> uh, a few weeks ago to uh, try and um, to ask them whether or not I could film some stuff inside. Uh, they've got a game coming up next Saturday as I record this. They haven't replied to me. Um, so the original plan was to see if I could get inside the stadium and show you guys what's actually in there. Uh, and then obviously film some of this game that they've got next week. But like I said, they haven't responded to me yet. Now, if they respond uh, in the intervening time between me filming this shot right now and when this video goes up, at the end of this video, there will be what I've just described to you. If they don't, then I'm afraid they, uh, they didn't contact me. But I am happy to come back and uh, have a look inside the stadium if they allow me to. In the meantime, let's get some exterior shots like we always do with the football ground and show you the Tufnell's home of football stadium. Two senior football clubs play in Dronfield. These are Sheffield FC, the world's oldest football club, and also Dronfield Town, who play at the Stone Lake playing fields. Sheffield FC, though, is the club we're going to concentrate on here. They currently play in the Northern Premier League Division 1 East. 
Founded in October 1857, the club was recognised by FIFA as the second oldest existing club still playing football in the world. And that's because Cambridge University AFC is apparently the oldest, having been formed a year earlier in 1856. Sheffield FC initially played games under the Sheffield rules and did not officially adopt the new FA rules until 1878. The club competes in the rules derby with near neighbours Hallam. In 2004, they were given the FIFA Order of Merit, an award which has only ever been given to one other club, and that's Real Madrid. In 2007, they were inducted into the English Football Hall of Fame to commemorate their 150th anniversary, and the club were visited by none other than legendary Brazilian striker Pelé. So I had to make two endings for this video, one for if they did respond and one for if they didn't. This is the one for if they didn't, and it's a bit disappointing that they didn't, uh, but never mind, at least you got to see the home of football and the coaching horses, which is right next to it. And there you go, that is the last one in North East Derbyshire. The district is finally complete. It's taken me a long time to do it. It's a very tough one, lots of hilly places, and places that uh, places I've never been before in Derbyshire and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it I really do I know I haven't caught everything in Dronfield uh, because it's such a big town but now it's time for you guys to let me know anything that I may have missed here in Dronfield or in any of the other 23 in northeast Derbyshire all you've got to do is use the comments box down there in this video and in the other 23 parish videos of northeast derbyshire to let me know any more information and then a roundup video will come your way in the new year but for now this has been the parish of dronfield the town of dronfield this has been the district of northeast derbyshire this is the last one in this district that's going up before christmas so have a me very merry christmas everybody who's watching and i will see you next year i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out